Hey guys, what's up? It's Megan, and today we're gonna do a little bit of Q&A. So I've had some people that are writing in with some questions or comments, and so we're gonna really start addressing more of those as they come in. So uh, you can feel free to send me a message or comment on one of the videos if, if there's something that you were thinking about, and if it's something I can help you with, I'm more than happy to. So I had a girl that wrote and was uh, basically saying that she was hoping that this style of practice can help strengthen the muscles of her back body and help her heal from some SI problems that she's been dealing with. And so that is one of the main focuses of this particular style of practice, which we've gone over in just the most recent video with the bow spring, and talking about how this alignment to me is, it's the most therapeutic that I have come across in my, you know, over 10 years of study and almost 10 years of teaching. And that's why I've adopted it, is because it's so therapeutic. And so dealing with something like an SI issue, uh, uh, a lot of times what we find with people with SI problems is that they're dealing with the SI, so sacroiliac, uh, that's the abbreviated term for that, um, sacroiliac, uh, which is the triangular bone there at the base of the spine just to go over where it's located. So she's talking about basically the, the triangular bone there is the sacrum at uh, the base of the spine and the sacroiliac is, is where the sacrum will, will come in contact with the crest of the ilium. So sacroiliac junction is what she was what she was commenting about um, and a lot of people deal with problems in this area and so what we found oftentimes is that actually the psoas can be contributing to the SI pain believe it or not and so the psoas is the only muscle in the body that connects the torso and the limbs and so it originates at the T12 vertebrae and descends over the the crest of the ilium and it attaches to the head of the lesser trochanter so um, this particular muscle is is one of the most important in the body and I'm always joking about it being the boss but it really kind of is because um, if it's out of alignment then it causes a kind of domino effect with many other muscles and um, uh, can affect you know something like uh, the the sacroiliac as well so going into that direction as far as all of the poses for the most part that we do uh, with the bowstring alignment are done with bent knees. And so for that reason, well there's a few reasons, but for one is that by bending the knees, we essentially replicate the all fours position. And the all fours position is when the head of the femur is most optimally aligned. And so it's actually when the body is happiest as far as being in that all fours position, we have the head of the femur completely encapsulated into the acetabulum of the pelvis. When we stand upright is when the head of the femur becomes most vulnerable. Right? And so for folks who let the head of the femur shove actually forward and drift forward, which is a very common misalignment, um, that can exacerbate the problem even more so. So by bending the knees in every pose, we right ahead create that all four alignment to replicate the all fours essentially. So it's, it's already a very therapeutic uh, alignment for the head of the femur, which is also um, relieving the psoas muscle. Uh, so that's gonna, for one, potentially help with with any SI issues. The other thing that we do in this practice, which is extraordinarily helpful, is an extreme broadening of the pelvic floor. So in every single pose, we're pressing the knees wide energetically. And so this pressing wide actually broadens the pelvic floor. And also by strengthening the gluteus maximus muscles, um, that's, well, and the, all the muscle, the muscles along the back body, uh, but particularly the gluteus maximus muscles we're actually working with the origin insertion and, and mounding the glutes towards the sacrum and so all of these things are going to be very healing for the SI again the broadening of the pelvic floor replicating the all fours position um, and then also focusing on toning and strengthening the back body and that's what so many people don't realize is that you know their muscles are weak. And so the, the weak muscles, uh, it's, it's just, we don't have a strong foundation and then people wonder why they have back pain or, you know, neck problems or, you know, um, you know any, any even knee issues and so forth can be because there's an imbalance. And that's what we're focusing on in this particular style of practice, it's holistic. So we're looking at finding balance and equanimity through all the muscles in the body so that everything's working working in a more harmonious uh, relationship so that we can hopefully alleviate pain and prevent also. So that pretty much will give you a 
a little bit of a it should sum, sum up a, a kind of general answer um, for for that particular comment slash question um, so the other question that we have um, so I have a guy that wrote in who had recently found um, found my work and finds it very interesting he's got some questions I haven't done any forms of exercise for about 10 years what type of program would you recommend uh, someone like me start with I think I'm healthy my only issue is I've had some lower back pain for the past five years but I'm not sure from from what so of course you know it would be helpful to know a little bit more um, about this particular gentleman but just from this um, this question we'll, we'll do the best that we can so um, so definitely one of the things that I would would focus on with him is okay if he's having a little bit of lower back pain we definitely don't want to just rush into anything and also if he hasn't been exercising for 10 years we don't want to like um, you know just go go super hardcore in the beginning beginning and, and just kind of send them into a tailspin either because that can be you can over can be too aggressive and, and actually do more harm than good um, so I guess one of the things that I would discuss with him for sure is diet because believe it or not our diet can actually cause us pain in our joints and in our body so that would be one of the things that I would suggest actually he start with would be um, an elimination diet I would get rid of all the inflammatory causing foods for one so basically looking at um, getting Getting rid of um, gluten, um, so wheat products and dairy, uh, soy would be a big one. Refined sugar is huge, so definitely eliminating that. Um, I would also consider uh, eliminating nightshades, um, which is like in the eggplant, tomato, um, potato, uh, peppers family. Uh, and that would be some of some of the the inflammatory causing foods. So I would I would get him to to eliminate some of those things and see how you know how that's helping. And then the other thing would just be to start with some very light exercise. So basically, um, you know, just maybe starting with walking. You know, getting some walks in would be helpful. And then if he and I were to potentially work together one on one, I would start him with some very very basic um, yoga yoga for very very, very beginners that haven't had any type of practice so that we don't overdo it and you know we allow his body to get a little bit stronger and more capable of um, progressing on the path um, so diet is a huge one believe it or not guys with um, aches and pains in the body and inflammation um, and so so that would be where I would start with with him is again getting rid of the inflammatory causing foods and uh, some light exercise and some very basic uh, yoga routines to get him started. So again, if you guys have questions or comments, uh, feel free to drop me a line. And if I'm able, I'd be happy to help you with anything that I'm skilled in. Uh, so, and if again, you're looking into, um, you can check into my website uh, and, and drop me a line there, or you can do it, do so through the YouTube channel. Thanks so much and have a beautiful day. Ciao.